Hi everyone and welcome to this Mother's Day edition of The Crow Show brought to you by Foodland. I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith. Yes, a big shout out to all the mums out there. Hope you're having a lovely day. Well, of course, it is also Showdown Weekend and Mark, you have your own place in Showdown history. <laughs> oh yes, Alana. Uh, we certainly had some memorable clashes, but more about that shortly. Also today, Wayne Miller's football journey reflected in the club's new Indigenous Guernsey. And Radar's moment of Showdown magic. But first, football fans attending Adelaide Oval are witnessing a stunning renewal of the Riverbank precinct. The festival centre and the casino are undergoing major redevelopment and a new plaza is being built incorporating twin office towers and new retail and dining areas. Together with the convention centre, it'll be an impressive entertainment hub. But how will oval goers be affected by the work? For the new Marshall Liberal Government it's extremely exciting uh, to have Adelaide working as it is and, and the, the home games here that are really helping to alive in this whole Riverbank precinct and I'm really looking forward to all these new things coming on board, the new tram station by the Adelaide Festival Theatre, also the redevelopment of the casino. It's really going to help to enliven this space and for those tens of thousands of people that come along to a game uh, to be able to have them interact in this broader Riverbank precinct afterwards is a great opportunity. This area between the convention centre, between what's going on with Festival Plaza, there's a whole heap of construction, but once it's completed, it's, we're really going to help to unlock this space. and um, We really want to help keep people in Adelaide, keep them having a good time, uh, and especially afterwards if we're celebrating a good Crows win, uh, this place will really uh, come alive and get pumping. Stadiums right across Australia uh, have been shown as a, a way to provide development next to uh, these stadiums, and our brilliant Adelaide Oval, the best oval in the country, uh, is really a great opportunity for us to be able to build development around uh, this oval upgrade and we're really looking forward to this Riverbank precinct coming alive with this whole heap of development that's going on at the moment. So there is going to be some issues around during the construction period uh, but we will still start to see some developments open by the end of this year uh, so in time for footy season next year people will see a vastly different precinct. Uh, there's still a couple of years to go on the, the broader Sky City redevelopment uh, but bit by bit we're helping to unlock this Riverbank precinct so that it can be a great place to enjoy yourself after a big Crows win. Can't wait to see it complete. Well, it's always exciting when an emerging star stamps his class on the competition. Wayne Miller has formed this year underscores the potential the Crows saw when they took him as their number one draft pick three years ago. Wayne's uncle Roger helped design this year's Indigenous Guernsey. Junior knows the importance of grabbing every opportunity as he explains in this chat brought to you by Revolution Roofing. saying one man's loss is another man's gain certainly applies to Wayne Millerer. In the wake of Brodie Smith's injury, coaches knew they had a possible replacement. So last year um, in my exit meeting, I'm with, obviously with Smithers being out for the majority of this year, Pikey and some of the coaches just said, look we're interested in trialling you down back just over the summer, just to train with the, the backs group and um, see, see how I go down there. Miller up, he's doing as he pleases at the moment, it's been a big night for him. Junior credits all of the defenders with helping him adjust to the new role, but singles out one in particular. Smithy's been a big hand in that, he's, you know, when I was playing sample and even at training, he's just giving me tips on, on what to work on, what to, and, and what works out on fields and what's worked for him. As one of five Indigenous Crows players, Wayne Miller at can't wait for the Sir Doug Nichols round in two weeks to wear the club's new Guernsey. So I'm um, a Naranga man and Gunnichamara at Wachabolik. So Gunnichamara and Wachabolik are Victorian, that's my mum's side of my family. And Naranga's here in SA, so that's down on the York Peninsula. And that's my dad's side, so um, they're my well, three, three main groups, so that's where I'm from. The Guernsey illustrates Wayne's journey from his junior footy at Ingle Farm through to the AFL, recognising all those who've helped him along the way. I feel real proud. Um, obviously a great club and you know I'm really strong about my Indigenous culture and just a real proud moment to wear it. Well, unfortunately, Wayne's promising season has been briefly interrupted by injury, but we look forward to seeing him back 
Well, Showdown History is now in its 21st season and the intense competition is probably just as fierce now as it was in the very first clash back in 97. Mark, what would you say lies at the heart of the rivalry? Well, initially it's about the way the, the Crows came into the competition. Port Adelaide, they seemingly went behind the back of all the other Sandville clubs and the Crows were formed. So that, I think, sort of irked a lot of the supporters initially. But then it becomes about the fans, the fierce rivalry, the, uh, the bragging rights. There's two teams in one state two doesn't go into one there can only be one winner so there's no doubt that uh, both power and crows fans love bragging when their team wins yeah you still speak to people that say they'd rather two showdown wins in a season than a flag i'm not sure no, about that but <laughs> what about some of the modern day players uh, particularly those that come from interstate and perhaps didn't grow up with this rivalry what does showdown mean to them yeah look uh, when we first started playing the first couple both port and the crows were mainly made up of south australian players so that that rivalry was really strong, but maybe it's been diluted slightly. Um, I talked to Josh Jenkins through the week, and he said, yes, the game's bigger with the build-up and the atmosphere, mm -hmm. but in terms of the, the hatred to Port Adelaide, perhaps not quite there, because he really, you know, he's, it's just like playing any other team. But uh, off the field, certainly as strong as ever. And, of course, you're part of uh, showdown history or folklore with the uh, the Darrell Wakelin incident. How do you reflect on that? Yeah, not my finest hour, I wouldn't have thought. But, um, unfortunately, you can't undo things that have already happened. It was one of those things, uh, I think it was costly for both clubs. Clearly, uh, Port Adelaide were inconvenienced. Darrell not playing for, you know, four or five weeks. And, and I was suspended for five weeks, which included three finals. And we were knocked out in the prelim final as Port Adelaide were. So, I don't think there was any winners in that. No goes down in history though. All right, still to come on The Crow Show, we'll recap yesterday's big game and Smithers shows us he's young at heart. Okay, as we've seen this year, Brodie Smith is making many young friends who, as it happens, seem to list defenders as their favourite players. With the help of Thomas Farms, let's see if this week is any different. Welcome to the Junior Jam, brought to you by Thomas Farms. Last year I interviewed my teammates, this year I'll be interviewing some of our youngest members. This week we've got Connor. Welcome Connor. <laughs> I need to know how old you are, do you play footy? And who's your favourite player? So I am six. Yeah. And my favourite um, player is Eddie. Yeah. Eddie Betts? Yes. Yeah. Do you play footy? Yes. Yeah. Also play soccer. Soccer as well, yep. Yeah. I used to play soccer. If you went to the zoo and you could take an animal home, what would it be and how would you take it? Oh yeah, I might take a hit of hippopotamus. <laughs> hippopotamus. How are you going to take that? How are you going to get that out of the zoo? When the um, people who own it, when they're sleeping, I'll just take it. <laughs> you just take, just drag it out of there. Would you rather have bright blue hair or bright blue feet? Bright blue hair. Really? Why is that? Because I don't want my feet to be blue. That's a fair enough. <laughs> Alright, thanks for your time, Connor. Uh. <laughs> Good to see a forward mention for a change. Now over the years we've seen plenty of showdown screamers. In this High Flyers segment brought to you by Flight Centre, we feature a former crow not normally known for his aerial feats. But in round 5 2012, Brent Riley soared over Andy Otten to grab a beauty. Ten minutes from half time. Michael. Riley! That's higher than he's ever got! It was good to take a high mark over you know, any showdown, I guess. Didn't take a good mark, but uh, yeah, I just had, had a good flight of it and uh, unfortunately I jumped on Otto rather than uh, Westhoff, so uh, but a uh, good mark in the, in the scheme of things. Oh, Riley! What an outstanding grab! In juniors I always took marks and uh, I started off at half-back, uh, Neil Craig had an opportunity back and then went to the midfield and uh, I still took some decent marks playing in the midfield but in, when I was in the back half I could actually read the play and, and knew how to take a mark and, and, and read the ball, so uh, yeah, I guess that was a bit of a hallmark of my game. 
trying to teach the guys to get in the right position and take a good mark. And you, know, you see Tommy Dudo playing at the moment; that he's, he's got that knack to, to read the play and, and go for his mark. So, uh, it's really encouraging to see that. Certainly one of Radar's career highlights. And for the record, the Crows finished up winning that day by 19 points. After the break, why there's still a place for history in our digital world. And new goals for the former player with a unique showdown experience. we saw what awaits fans outside Adelaide Oval. Inside, the latest audiovisual technology provides spectators with a sensory experience. But a century-old mechanical marvel looms over the ground to prove that tradition still has a place in a modern sporting arena. The scoreboard provides one of the best views you can have, so let's catch up with the man in charge on game day. The scoreboard has told the story of some of Australia's greatest sporting moments. Eddie Burns, Eddie Burns. While spectators barely notice the seamless change of scores, behind the scenes, it's a frantic fusion of men and machinery. I work with Jim. Jim's a port man and I'm a, I'm a Crows man, so one of us are, are, are always happy every weekend here. That requires timely coordination by six operators, but in football season, there's just two. The total, the goals, the behinds are over, over the four floors, but, but with cricket, every, every window, every shutter, every handle, every, every uh, chain cog is turning. Yeah, every roller, every number. Each year, 100,000 visitors are taken on tours of the grandstand. 65% are from interstate and overseas, including visiting international cricketers. It's the last operating scoreboard of, of its type in the, uh, in, in the southern hemisphere, actually. So it's quite special. You know, when, when you think about the, 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 you know, the ground now, this is probably it's more precious than ever. It's the last standing building you know, from the original oval. So 50 plays, 30. During games, there's normally a bit of extra entertainment. Probably the only board that, that, that's got it, you know, a, a bar below, so you, you can watch the yobbos carry on on the hill. Yeah, it's quite entertaining, so, but, uh, you know, that, the patrons here are pr pretty well behaved. He nominates the Crows' victories in two home finals last season as his best football memories. So... Next time you glance at the board, remember Simon and Jim are there helping preserve history. The scoreboard was built in 1911 and personally, I hope it stays there for another 100 years. I trust you're enjoying this week's episode of The Crows Show. For those of you who can't get enough content from the club, we now have a second TV show for you to watch called Footy Plus. It also airs on Channel 7 and can be seen straight after our games. It's also replayed on our website and Channel 7's digital platforms. Only a handful of players have worn both the Crows and Power Guernseys in their career. Brad Symes is one of them. After 20 games for Port, he crossed to Adelaide in 2008 and went on to play another 60. He's now involved in the Crows Past Players and Officials Association and understands the importance of looking after players once they finish their careers. Spent four years at the Power and as you know we got uh, saw the light for all those Crows fans out there and uh, came across to West Lakes in 2008. The one thing I absolutely loved about uh, my move to the Adelaide Footy Club was the culture. It's a club that prides itself on a pretty strong culture. Um, you tend to lose that when you're out of the system so to see if we can create something like that for the past players that was such a big part of our lives when we were playing the game I think is, a, is pretty important. We set up a uh, past players and official welfare committee program about two and a half, three years ago now, mainly on the back of some pretty good work that Rod Jamison did and continues 
opportunities to do that. It's just another layer um, to add on in terms of providing a, a network and a support level for those that you know need to tap into it. It's a pretty intimate and li little group and one that whether you've played you know one game or 300 you should be pretty proud to be a part of. So just about bringing those guys back together and it's great to you know go to a golf day or come to a come to a past players game and, and just catch up with these guys that not only you you've played a bit of footy with but you kind of grew up idolising as well so no I think it's a really good idea. Brad suffered 12 concussions during his career, forcing his early retirement. So he certainly knows the importance of player welfare. Stay with us. Still ahead, the player's messages for mum. And who has the best footy voice? all the mums out there are enjoying their special day. For the players, it's a time to recognise the contribution their mothers have made to their careers. A big happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Hope everyone has a fantastic day. It's going to be an even more special day for myself and my wife Izzy, who we're expecting in the near few days. Uh, and also a special, special happy Mother's Day to my mum, who, who obviously has done so much for me and, and spends a lot of time driving to Adelaide to make sure she's supporting me. So looking forward to spending the day with her. Well, happy Mother's Day to all the mums out there. Uh, in particular, happy Mother's Day to my beautiful mum and my wife, who is a great mum to our two kids. Well, as we've seen already on our show, Adelaide is one of two AFL clubs in professional esports competitions. Now the club has launched a high school esports league in which schools across Australia will play each other in the League of Legends. Registrations are invited from all states except New South Wales and Queensland and they close on May the 23rd. Each team needs five students and a teacher or staff member has to be involved. Schools who register on the website will be eligible to win five Razor headsets. Okay, we all spend many hours each season tuning into the AFL on radio and television and we naturally prefer some commentators over others. So, who do the fans favour? You can't go past the uh, committee from before. Dennis committee. There's a few I like, Kerry. Oh, probably hard to go past uh, Bruce McAvaney, I think, yep. being, a, being a local as well. Probably BT, Brian Taylor. What's up? Oh, he just he makes it fun and entertaining, you know? It's not so boring when you're watching the footy. McAvaney, because uh, he's an Adelaide man. I like, uh, like Bruce McAvaney. Yeah, I'm probably going to say the same thing, Brian Taylor, yeah. Let's stay with the fans and select our face in the crowd. Why don't we settle on you? If you recognise yourself, contact the club by 5pm next Wednesday. Be ready with some photo ID and you'll win a merchandise pack courtesy of Toyota. Well, Alana, we've certainly covered a fair bit of ground today on our Mother's Day edition of The Crow Show, brought to you by Foodland. Yeah, we certainly have, Mark, but we should briefly look ahead to next week when, to coincide with our Bulldogs clash, we'll talk to their skipper, Easton Wood, about his high-flying exploits. Until then, make sure you keep up to date by visiting the club website, afc.com.au, as well as the social media platforms. Thanks for your company today, and we look forward to joining you again next Sunday on 7. We'll see you then. Bye for now.